was that 2019 2019 right tim Dillon show towards the end of the episode he speaks about not doing open mics i remember this episode because i think this episode i think tim was trolling brendan i feel like he knew everything about the friday kid sub he knew all the hate he gets and he was kind of trolling him but brendan's too redacted to figure it out and he probably thought he was just joking but i think tim was trolling him the entire time his perspective on open mics is really interesting because imagine this is at the peak of t5k 2019 and yeah he kind of says he didn't do open mics because he was playing in front of sold out t5k crowd which is odd justification for not putting in the work but anyway let's continue we're doing europe and uh yeah all europe. over man Ireland. what do you say what do you think the biggest thing the biggest advantage that you have over other people when it comes to like your ability to you know get people in theaters and get people out like what, i don't know do you, I, don't, yeah. I don't think i have an advantage i think i have a fan base based well, you, off, it's an advantage an earned advantage but it's an yeah, advantage, yeah. but uh, but I'm, I'm just saying like i don't think i have like some secret or so like yeah i think burt kreischer is way better at marking than i am he's great he's, he's way better um i don't i don't I, I i don't feel like i have an advantage when it comes to that stuff i think you know, I put in year. You know, me and Brian been together for six years. So when did you meet him? Uh, like six, seven years ago. And were you were doing stand up then, or you just met him? Before? No, met him and then uh, started doing the Fire and the Kid. Then took that on the road, and that's when I started doing stand up. So Fire and the Kid's been around for six years. Six years. And then you guys developed a huge fan base right out the gate, and then took that on the road. And when did you meet Rogan? Met Rogan. I mean, well, remember Rogan was a UFC commentator. Of course. So okay. when I was fighting the UFC, me and Rogan were boys. Okay. And then we got really close when I moved to LA. Right. And then him and Brian were the ones who were like, do stand up. When did up. you first do stand up? So we have to blame Rogan and Callan for You Be Surprised and the Gringo Pappy. You have to blame those two guys for it. I uh, first did stand up, would be, yeah. I mean, first time we did a live fire in the kid. Because uh, we did it at Bray Improv, 550 people. That was my open mic. And Brian was like, oh, you're going to go out and you do 10 minutes stand-up. You're going to wow. go out and do 10 minutes. And he was like, so every show we're going to start doing this. This can be your open mic. And how, did, how, was the, how did the first one go? <laughs> Not great. Right. Imagine, imagine thinking an open mic. Imagine thinking playing in front of a sold-out podcasting audience is a podcast audience, sorry, of fans is the same as going to an open mic. That's why you know he was never going to be successful in stand-up. He approached it completely wrong. He thought that was okay to play in front of your home crowd. People that always that love you anyway. They're just happy to be in your presence. And that would somehow substitute going to a shitty comedy club where no one knows who you are and trying to make that room laugh. That would obviously would help him better. But again, he started from a bad position from the minute zero or the minute one, sorry, from the very beginning. It was never going to work out for him, unfortunately. I mean, not, you know, it's, right. Uh, but that's the thing where people are like, oh, you didn't have to do the open mic thing where no one's around. I'm like, well, hold on. You mean open mics where it's full of other comics hating on the the comics who are performing? Right. My open mic was in front of 550. He needs, you know what I mean? He, he looks at open mics like, he looks at open mics as like, um, like a comedy club version of Reddit. That's what he thinks open mics are. Just comedians just hating on each other, right? So he avoided them. When in actuality, he actually needed that. He needed to be in comedy clubs where people would be like hating on him, jealous, saying shit. It would actually train him, actually sharpen his comedic chops to be able to kind of clap back, right? Without using a C clamp, without getting violent and actually using his words. He actually would have maybe gotten funnier, but he didn't. He ran away, resorted back to home comforts, you know, performing in front of sold out T-Fat K crowds that are just happy to be there. And then look where he is now. He's still not funnier than he was when he first began. Like, has he improved really from You Be Surprised to Google Pappy? Not really. Both specials are probably the same. Bleak. 50 people, tons of pressure. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Now, and then your first special was Showtime. How many years after that? Anyway, you look, you heard the gist of it. So that's what Brennan thinks about open mics. He doesn't believe in them. He thinks they're just platforms for other comedians to go and hate on each other. And he avoids them like the plague and would rather perform in front of a home crowd. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> like legitimately. Like no wonder he was never going to be funny, man. Starting comedy already in your mid thirties is difficult, especially if you're not a funny person. I think if you were always a class cloud and you start late, fair enough. But I think just going from being a regular athlete, a regular dude in one way, a fighter, and then suddenly wanting to do stand up is difficult, especially if you're thin skinned, especially if you can't 
take the piss out of yourself. It's not going to work properly.